Welcome back, troglodytes, to Would You Rock or Not. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm on the Gibson website here, and we're basically going to browse the 2018 limited edition guitars. So our first one here is a 1959 ES335 reissue, which is a rose tattoo model. The list price on this one is $7,299. And it basically looks like a 59 reissue with kind of a, a transparent gray, slightly worn finish as you can see there. And it has a rose tattoo on it. But what I really want to point out here is they misspelled rose here. So it's a rose tattoo, which is interesting. The next one here is the Modern Double Cut Custom. Now this guitar kind of reminds me of the M3 series. They seem to have a similar design, but they've kind of just brought it back as a new model. Looks like we have a master volume, master tone, as well as two pickups. So it's kind of like a new double cut Les Paul in a way, but with the custom vibe. Now they do offer quite a few different finishes on this one. An ebony, silver burst, candy apple red, DC rust. I, I like that one. And honey burst. I think if I was going to pick one of these, it would probably either be the straight black or this DC Rust thing. I would like that. It's kind of like a, a Cobra Burst vibe. The next one's called a Les Paul Custom Abalone Sparkle GH. Abalone inlays aren't for everyone. I think Mother of Pearl looks a little more traditional, but Abalone has always looked a little more extra fancy. Kind of like a holographic collectible card. Again, Gibson was smart and offered these in a bunch of different finishes. So we have a blue sparkle, green sparkle, gray sparkle, lavender sparkle, and white sparkle. This white sparkle reminds me of the pearl white finish from the 80s. So this guitar kind of already exists in a way without the abalone inlays. But I don't know. I think I'm kind of drawn to this gray one and the purple one. This next one is called the Modern Double Cut Semi Hollow. It's kind of like a semi-hollow version of the other double cut we were already looking at. This one kind of looks plain to me. I don't like it that much. At the price point of $4,000, I think it looks a lot less fancy than this other one. If we go back for $500 more, you can get a much nicer looking guitar, but it doesn't have the semi-hollow features. Looks like we have a white pearl, gray pearl, blue pearl, and pearl coral. Yeah, again, I'm not a big fan of these ones. I think they should have done a better color. These colors remind me of the Les Paul Vixen series. I think they could have done better on these. Our next one here is the Les Paul Junior Mosaic. I, I really don't care for this one. A little over $4,000 for a Les Paul Junior that really doesn't look all that special. I'm, I'm not buying this one. I think that's overpriced. Now, I will say this natural one looks a lot more fancy, and I could see maybe paying a slight premium for one of those, but I think this red one's a fail. Ah, the Les Paul Custom Moonless Night. I did feature this one in a separate episode, so if you're interested in seeing more pictures of a real one of those, there is another video. I like the Moonless Night. I think... $4,300 for a brand new Les Paul Custom that's limited edition. I think it's fair if you're in the mindset of buying a new guitar. What I like about this model is they did bring back the black binding. You don't find that on a lot of guitars, and I think they really do give an exotic look to it. So basically this is just a black sparkle finished Les Paul Custom with rich light fretboard. Alright, moving on to the Les Paul Special Double Cut TV. Now, when I first saw this one up here, I was like, it's just a black TV special. What's great about that besides, you know, being a rare finish back in the 50s? Uh, I kind of like this one now that I've looked at it. I think 4500 is a bit pricey when I can get a Les Paul Custom for the same price. But what I do like is because of the TV black finish, you can still see the wood grain underneath. I think all black guitars should be like that. I would like the ebony finish a lot more if that was the case. So overall, fairly basic Gibson double cut. Now we have a modern Les Paul Standard Trans Metal. So this looks like a regular Les Paul Standard with a fully chambered body and a long neck tenon there. 
I mean, it's just kind of a chambered Les Paul standard. And the only finish available is Trans Metal. Eh, perhaps I'm not getting the full story on this one, but I think this one's kind of a bust. It's boring, and it's almost $5,000. I would pass on that one. The Les Paul Custom Boogie Van. This is kind of interesting looking. I don't quite understand the reference. So I guess the story behind this one is basically in the late 70s, there was a thing called a custom van craze, and that's probably similar to what they looked like. So I guess that's kind of a novelty item. Now, I like these colors. These are interesting. We'll take a look at them here. So there's kind of a blue into black, and then you have Germany's flag colors. And this next one is Romania's flag and that one. So these are kind of interesting if you're into the whole boogie van thing. Next one is the Les Paul Custom Scorpion. I've seen people talk about these and I think these are going to be really popular. I think six grand is a little bit much, but I don't think it's completely unrealistic for a uh, Super 400 inlaid Les Paul Custom with kind of almost a neck through vibe. So based on the popularity of like the Widow and Centipede models, Gibson made a Scorpion model here. They made them limited to just 25 of each color worldwide, and it looks like we've got three finishes on here. A red Scorpion, a white Scorpion, and the yellow Scorpion. So it looks like you still have your two-piece maple top, but you have these different finishes on it, and kind of a translucent darker finish on the edges for each of these. This red one looks especially good because the flame is visible in the darker areas a little bit better. Next one, the Year of the Dog. This is what started this video. I saw one of these on Reverb and I was like, that's kind of interesting. I wouldn't want to buy it, especially not at $7,000, but it's kind of got a unique vibe. The comment section on this website kind of said that these symbols mean Gibson wishes you a happy Year of the Dog, something like that. So this is kind of your Chinese Zodiac calendar thing. If you're a Year of the Dog type person, well, maybe you would like this one. But it's basically a Les Paul standard, which has been customized a lot. I like that they gave it the red Gibson logo. And the only finish for this one is Crimson Red. Next up is the Mick Ralph's 1958 Les Paul standard. So this is just a replica of some famous guy's burst. I think these replicas of other people's guitars are kind of boring. They've been done a lot. Nothing too interesting here. Next is the Les Paul Custom Triple A Quilt Top. So this one kind of looks interesting. That's a little trippy. I like that quilt top. It's unique. So they offer it an ocean blue, a Cobra Burst, which I think is a cool finish. I'd like to get a, a Cobra Burst ESLP one day. So I think it's the most affordable that you can buy with that finish. Trans Amber doesn't really do it for me. Next is the Les Paul Custom Chambered Blackout. Now, this model has been getting a lot of hate online on like the Les Paul forums and things like that. I think they're cool. I think Gibson knocked it out of the park with this one. It's definitely for a niche market, not for everyone, but... I appreciate that they're doing these weird exotic colors. Now EMG pickups, you either love them or you hate them, but I like these transparent black inlays. I think they look better than just a straight black fretboard. But what's really unique on these is all the different finishes. You've got a Diablo yellow, which kind of reminds me of like the nuclear yellow ones. I'll be doing a review on one of those guitars here shortly. You've got stallion red, which is kind of cool, and just straight up ebony. If I was going to buy one of these, it would probably be the orange one, maybe the yellow. The Les Paul Custom Ice Flame is the next one on our books. At this price, it's kind of a collector's piece only. I almost think this is a little overdone. It's a little distasteful by just how much stuff is on it. You really can't realistically play this guitar because it just looks a little bit too fancy. Our next one is the SG Standard Bohemian. Seems like this is just a reissue of kind of a Les Paul SG. It just seems like a really nice guitar. They say they have Super 74 humbuckers that are underwound. 
and it's basically just a really nice playing guitar. At $4,200, I think that's quite a bit, but they do offer quite a few different finishes on this one. This one they call Spice. This next one they call Blue Sky. I think that'll be a popular one. You also have a Sunshine, which is kind of like a really faded cherry. Sage, I like that. It reminds me of the uh, Silver Fox that they used to do on like the Epiphones. I love that finish. And then Mink. So I think the Sage and Blue Sky are definitely my favorite finishes on that. The next limited edition SG is called the Flying Eagle. I think this one's kind of unique. However, I don't like this headstock. They kind of went for like the Les Paul Artisan vibe, but instead it almost just looks like a counterfeit Gibson. I don't know, something about that logo just doesn't look right to me. But you have these exotic inlays on the fretboard. It looks like a beautifully flamed top with three pickups. It appears the top is made of figured koa, and you have a five-piece maple walnut neck. That's really nice. And they do have an ebony fingerboard on this one, so big props to them for that. Here you can kind of see that five-piece maple neck. If you look up a 2550th anniversary, you'll kind of see what they were going for on that neck. But I think this is a beautiful guitar. If you're looking for a really exotic SG custom-like thing, I think this would definitely fit you, but at $8,300, I, I think that's a little bit pricey. Our next is the Modern Arch Top at $5,000. I'm not a big arch top guy. I mean, I know jazzy guitars usually are fairly expensive, but I, I'm not a big fan of this one. And this one only comes in Argentine Gray, which is basically Tobacco Sunburst, and a Sparkling Burgundy here. And I saved the best one for last, the Modern Flying V. Out of all the ones on here that we just went through, this has to be my favorite. This is kind of a bizarre looking guitar. If you're a big Flying V fanatic, you probably hate this thing. I think it kind of looks like those Jackson guitars. I believe their fins go down like that. But I think this is just so beautifully awkward looking that it works for me. It checks all the boxes. Does it look strange and goofy? Yes. Does it kind of have a cool vibe to it? Yeah. So I definitely like this one. I like that they have the small block inlays here, kind of like the 70s SGs did for a time, as well as like the 335s. But it just looks like a rocket ship. And how cool is that? These are offered in three different finishes. You have your ebony prism, silver prism, and gold prism. So, I hope you Trollolites enjoyed this look at the 2018 model year of Gibson and some of the limited edition guitars that they're doing. Let me know in the comments section which one was your favorite. You already know what's mine. I really like this Flying V in the modern style. Alright Trollolites, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you tomorrow. Take care.